If you are trying to lose weight, you are either considering joining a gym or increasing your cardio by running more or cycling more. But the reality is that even after doing all of this, it still may not get you enough results. Why? Because exercising just to lose weight is pretty much useless. If you really want to lose weight, you need to see things from a different perspective and today that's exactly what I'm going to help you with. So what exactly do you need to lose weight? As discussed earlier, exercising alone won't help you lose weight. In fact, it's the food intake which matters a lot more. Even if you exercise for hours, a single slice of pizza can undo all your progress. So in other words, you can increase your physical activity by spending hours in the gym or you can take a different approach and make things pretty easier for you. But before that, you need to understand a few basic things about human body. If you have tried to lose weight earlier, then you most probably know that it's all about the calories. You might have heard that you need to eat less calories, burn more calories, eat calories from this diet, burn calories from those exercises. And honestly, I know it's pretty confusing. So let's go through all this one by one. Starting with calories. As you know, the human body needs energy to perform basic functions such as digestion, respiration, urine filtration and so much more. So this energy is derived from the food we eat and it's known as calories. You need to have enough calories so that your body is able to perform these functions. However, if you do too much on calories, it will lead to weight gain, which we'll discuss later on. Thus, you need to create a balance while consuming calories. To be more specific, I'm talking about calorie balance or energy balance. It is the amount of calories we consume and the amount of calories we expend. And this energy balance is much more effective than any exercise to lose weight. You can find the energy balance of your body by calculating your TDW that is your total daily energy expenditure. While the name itself is pretty explanatory, TDW tells you the total calories burned in a day, including your physical activity and the calories you burn to perform basic bodily functions. You'll be surprised to know that your physical activity includes a very small proportion of calories you burn in a day. In fact, you can burn more calories while sleeping rather than a 30-minute gym workout. After learning about calorie balance, you can easily lose weight by being in a calorie deficit. However, if you are watching this video, you are most likely listening to this term for the first time. So let me help you with it. When it comes to calculating calories and tracking how much calories you are consuming in a day, there can be three scenarios. First, calorie maintenance, second, calorie surplus, and third is calorie deficit. And to help you understand better, we are going to consider that your TDW, that is your total daily energy expenditure, is 2000 calories a day. Starting with calorie maintenance or your maintenance calories, it simply means that you are eating exactly the same amount of calories as per your TDW. So for example, if your TDW is 2000 calories and you are consuming 2000 calories a day, you will end up maintaining your current weight. On the other hand, if you are in a calorie surplus, it means you are consuming more calories than your body burns in a day. This means if your TDW is 2000 calories and you are consuming 2500 calories in a day, you will have excess energy. And this excess energy will be stored in your body in the form of fat or muscle which will increase your weight. So a calorie surplus is the reason of your weight gain in the first place. Now coming to the part we've all been waiting for, a calorie deficit. Being in a calorie deficit simply means that you're consuming lesser calories than your TDW. If your TDW is 2000 calories and you are only consuming 1500 calories, then your body will fill up this gap by releasing the additional energy stored in your body. So when you get in a calorie deficit, you lose weight and fat. However, being in a calorie deficit may not be as easy as it seems. 
in order to lose weight without any health issues and maintain it you need to be in a healthy calorie deficit while there are a lot of factors to be considered the two major ones are first is correct calorie intake and second is avoiding empty calories starting with the correct calorie intake I'm pretty sure some of you rocket scientists might be thinking that if your TTWE is 2000 calories and if you start eating 500 calories a day, you'll get slim really fast like by the weekend. But that's not how it works and it should not work that way. In fact, this will only lead to weight gain in the future. If you go in such extreme calorie deficit diets, your body won't even have the energy to perform its basic functions and it might result in various health issues. So it is recommended to decrease 10 to 30% of your TDW. So if your TDW is 2000 calories, the maximum you should be consuming is 1800 calories and the minimum you should be consuming is 1400 calories depending on how much weight you want to lose and how fast you want. But anything under 1400 calories will be considered unhealthy for you. Coming to empty calories, you might think having a slice of pizza is better than having a whole pie to achieve your calorie deficit. While technically things might work for you, it will be much worse than just a weight gain in the long run. You see, a calorie deficit is not just about reducing the amount of calories. While your body can easily survive by reducing 10 to 30% of your TDW, it still needs some nutrition in order to do this in a healthy way. Thus, it is important to ensure that you are reducing your calories by switching to healthier food options. While a slice of pizza and a bowl of oatmeal may have similar calories, an oatmeal will provide you much more nutrition than a slice of pizza and it will be more filling than the slice of pizza which will make you eat less. So in order to be in a healthy calorie deficit, you need to switch to healthier food options while consuming a safe amount of calories. Otherwise, your metabolism will slow down in the long run and whenever you will get out of the calorie deficit, you will again gain weight back. But Anya, I know the basics of a calorie deficit and I still can't lose weight because I am not able to calculate my TDW. Well, you don't have anything to worry about. TDW is very simple to calculate with the correct tools and knowing the basics. Instead of jumping to calculating your TDW, you need to know some basics as well. Your TDW includes some more terms such as BMR, TEF and TEA. Starting with BMR, which is basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate consists of the calories your body needs to perform daily functions such as respiration, breathing, thinking, urine filtration, etc. Your BMR consists of 60 to 70 percent of total calories burned in a day. It depends on various factors such as age, height, gender, and many more. So someone with a larger body will have a higher BMR as compared to someone with a smaller body. Moving on, we have TEF that is thermic effect of food. Your body needs calories while digesting food and how many calories it will require depends on the type of food you eat. For example, consuming fats and digesting them will require a lot less calories than consuming and digesting proteins. However, even if you are eating foods with high thermic effect like proteins, your TEF is only going to account for about 10% of your TDW. And lastly, we have TEA, that is not T, but it is thermic effect of activity. It accounts for the number of calories burned in a day through physical activity. Depending upon the intensity and duration of your workout, your TEA accounts for around 20 to 30 percent of the total calories burnt in a day. A person who goes to the gym and does high intensity workout will have a higher TEA than a person who is sedentary. You can get a rough approximation of your TEA by either using smartwatches or by using activity trackers. Now you can simply add these three to get your TDW and calculate your calorie deficit. 
However, I am assuming that you are neither good in math nor a master in nutrition. So calculating this can be a little tricky, but you can easily do it by using a tool from my website that is provided in the description below. With my TDWE calculator tool and the information that I have shared with you, I'm sure it will be very easy to calculate your calorie deficit. However, there is a long way to go when it comes to calculating your calorie deficit and actually being in a calorie deficit. So how can you make this fitness journey easy for you? Well, here are some insights that I have learned by losing 20 kgs myself and training over 3000 clients globally. Even though workouts are really beneficial for muscles and your heart health, but when it comes to calorie balance and calorie intake, your diet is much more effective. All you really need to do is switch to a calorie deficit diet and you lose weight and fat with time as your body will use fat as an energy source. Being in a healthy calorie deficit is much more important than quick results if you want a sustainable weight loss. Focus on switching to healthier eating options rather than just eating empty calories to maintain your calorie deficit. Maintaining a good water intake and a good sleep cycle is highly necessary to lose weight other than being in a calorie deficit. And even after all this, if you are struggling to get in a calorie deficit, it is best advised to seek a professional for help. I hope I have changed your perspective about weight loss and helped you understand what actually works and what doesn't. All those of you who are trying to lose weight, please mention your journey in the comment section. I would love to know what you're doing for your weight loss journey. If I have helped you understand things better about weight loss, get subscribed, give it a like, share it with your friends and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. You can also check out my fitness journey and learn how I lost 20 years.